Okay. Uh, okay. Here is an example. When an adult is randomly selected with replacement, okay, so with replacement, so they're independent trials, there is an 0.85% point, the 0.85 probability that the person knows what Twitter is based on a result from the Pew Research Survey, clearly before Twitter became X. Suppose that, the, that we want to find the probability that exactly three of five, okay, so if I randomly select three, uh, if I randomly select five people, what is the probability that three of them will know what Twitter is? Okay, does this procedure result in a binomial distribution? <clears throat> if this procedure does result in a binomial distribution, identify the values N, X, P, and Q. Okay, so we're saying that um, X is the number of people who know what Twitter is. Um, out of a group of five. Okay. So uh, there's four prob. So there's four. There are four um, um, conditions that need to be met. And uh, let's just take a book. Scroll back up here. Oops right here okay so fixed number independent uh but bernoulli trial and uh identically distributed same same probability all right so the first one is a fixed number uh, the trials are selecting one of the person one of the people and determining whether or not they know what twitter is or not so this one here is yes Yes, it is a fixed number, n equals 5. Okay, 2 is independent. Is it independent? Yes, because it is with replacement. So each trial is exact. each... Each time you pull somebody for your group, it's a completely independent. All right, the next one is, is it a Bernoulli trial? Yes, it's it's either they know what Twitter is or they don't. And then four is, um, is, is the probability the same? Yes, it is. The probability is 0 0.85. So yes, the probability is the same. Okay, so since it is is binomial n is going to be 5 x in this case is 3 p is 0.85 and q is 0.15 which equals 1 minus P. So that's what's left over. Whoops. 0.85. All right, great. Okay, and there's the... I think I, I'd like to have deleted this slide. I think I don't think I need it. Okay, okay, so here's another example. Given that there is a 0 0.585 ch probability that a randomly selected... Uh, adult knows what Twitter is. Use the binomial probability. Use the binomial probability formula to find the probability that when five adults are randomly selected, exactly three of them know what Twitter is. That is, apply the previous formula to find p of three. Given n equals five, x equals three, which is obvious because it's right there in the plugged into the probability function. P equals 0 0.85 and Q equals 1.5, All right. Well, I'm just going to go ahead and plug that in. So P of 3 is going to equal 5, 5 factorial over 
5 minus 3 factorial times 3 factorial. So that's n factorial over n minus x times f factorial times x factorial. And I'm going to multiply that by 0 0.85 raised to the x power, which is 3, times uh, what? 0 0.15 to the second power. That's n minus x. Okay, now I can um, I can plug this into my calculator. I can plug it in, or I could plug it into Excel. Uh, which would I? I think I'll use my calculator. <clears throat> On okay, where's prob? Oh, this calculator might not have probability. Uh, okay, I don't think my, well, all right, let's just do it anyway. Okay, so 5 factorial is 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. This, whoops, this is the same thing as 3 factorial. So I can cancel 3 factorial, let me use a different color. So I can cancel 3 factorial with sum of 5 factorial and be left with 5 times 4. This is simply 2 factorial, which is 2. So 2 will cancel with a 2 and the 4, and I'll end up with 10 on top. 1 of that 2 will cancel with a 2 and the, the 4, and I'll left, we'll be left with 5 times 2. So that's 10. Then I just need to multiply that by this. And this is something that any calculator can handle. Okay, so that's going to be 10 times 0 0.85 raised to the 3 times 0 0.15 raised to the 2 equals, and I get... 0 0.138, just 13.8 percent. Okay, does that seem that seem pretty reasonable? Um, if I randomly select five people from this population, the likelihood of three of them knowing Twitter is about 13 percent. Oh, the overtime rule. Okay, now this is super interesting. We, pre we previously noted that beginning in um, 1947 to 2011, there were 460 NFL football games decided in overtime. So they were tied, they went to overtime, and then a victor was established. And... 252 of these won by the uh, of them were won by the team that won the overtime toss. 252, a little more than half. Is the result of 252 wins in the 460 games equivalent to random chance? Is it just random chance that 252 won? Uh, wins correspond to the winner of the overtime flip or is 252 wins significantly high there's that word again significantly high is it unusually high is it very unusual that it was that high okay we can answer that question by finding the probability of 252 wins or more in 460 games Assuming that wins and losses <coughs> are equally likely, which is sort of the assumption here. Because the person that won the flip did so at random. Um, the, the coin doesn't know who plays better ball. And so it, uh, you know, uh, so... So why would those who win the flip be more likely to win unless 
there is an inherent advantage uh, in winning the flip, which I, which I think pretty much everybody knows by now. Everybody who knows anything about it, which does not include me. I, I hardly know anything about this overtime rule, but I, I still find this extremely interesting. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this. So the, the, the thing that they're asking is, is the probability of, what is the probability of 252 or more, uh, what's the probability of that? When P um, equals a half, right? So these are just random uh, um, the winning team, the better team, you might say, the team that ought to have won, was randomly chosen to go first, won the flip or not. And so, and so we're going to have P be one half. Q is also going to be one half. N is going to be 460. And so with those parameters, we'll be able to go to Excel and find... Uh, the probability of 252 or more. Now, this or more thing tells me we're going to need to use cumulative, but we're going to need to do it right. So the way that I'm going to figure this is this is the exact same thing as 1 minus probability of 251 or less or fewer. <clears throat> if I take away the probability of it being of x being 0 through 251, I am left with the probability of x being 252, 253, all the way up to 460. Now this, the or less, I can compute in Excel. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Um, go here. Oh, let's see, get out my keyboard. Uh, okay, so P of 252 or more. All right, and that's going to equal um, 1. Let's see, equals 1 minus binome dist number of successes is 252 no sorry 251 because I'm doing the 251 or less number of trials is 460 probability of success is one half we're assuming that that it didn't choose the winner it just um it, we're assuming it didn't choose the winner we're assuming that each one's equally as likely to win as the other cumulative i'm going to do one for true i press enter and i get point zero two two four three so this ends up equaling 0 0.02243, which is less than 0 0.05. So the probability of this thing just sort of happening, assuming that each team was chosen without regard to how good it was, which, which, which it ought to have, you know, been... Assuming that that was the case, the likelihood of this happening is is very small, is 2% uh, of the time. And so that tells me that these number of wins, because it's less than 0 0.05, is significantly high. It is significantly high. So what that tells me is, is that those who... <clears throat> Those who won the advantage, 
And those who won the coin flip have a material advantage in winning the overtime. Very difficult to prove otherwise, but by statistics we were able to demonstrate that. This is exactly the sort of thinking we find in hypothesis testing. Okay, here's another example. Using parameters to determine significance. A previous, a previous example involved N equals 460 overtime wins in the NFL football games. We get uh, that point five by assuming that the winning overtime coin toss does not provide an advantage. So both teams have the same 0 0.5 chance of winning the game in overtime. On average, they ought to just have the same, same chance of winning because the coin doesn't know who's going to win. Find the mean and standard deviation for the number of wins in groups of 460 games. So, in 460 games, we would expect there to be um, N times P wins 460 times 0 0.5 is 230. Use the range rule of thumb to find the value. Oh, and it wants the standard deviation. So that's going to be 230 times Q, which is 1 half, and then take the square root of that. 1 half of 230 is 115. Square root of 115 is... 10.7. Use the range rule of thumb to find the values separating the numbers of wins that are significantly low or significantly high. All right, well, significantly low is going to be 230 minus 2 times 10.7. And so that gives me 230 minus, so that's 230 minus, uh, minus 21.4, which gives me, if I'm not mistaken, 208.6. Oh, oh, Is that right? Yeah, that looks good. All right, and then the other one, the high, is going to be 230 plus 2 times 10.7, which is 21.7, which is 251.4. Whoa. 252 is right on the line. Is the result of 252 overtime wins significantly high? Barely. Just barely, but yes. Okay, I'd just like to go over another example here. In the 2013 Jerry's Artorama Art Supplies um, catalog, there are 560 pages. Eight of the pages feature signature artists. Suppose we randomly sample 100 pages. Um, let X equal the number of pages that feature signature artists among those 100. What does, what value does X take on? What is the probability, what is the probability distribution what is the probability distribution? Okay, so notice um, they must be sampling with replacement. Must be with replacement. Since 100 is, is um, bigger than 5% of 560. 
And so these would not be independent trials otherwise, and we could not use the... Uh, um, uh, so, yeah, if, if, it was, if it was with... If it was without replacement, these would not be independent trials, and we couldn't use the binomial distribution. So we're assuming it would need to be with replacement. Okay, let X equal the number of pages that feature signature artists. All righty. Okay, so, and it's with replacement, so we could have 100 pages with artists. It's not limited to 8. All right, so what values does X take on? X could be 0. We take we get we sample no pages. One we one page one of the one hundred pages is a signature artist, and that could go all the way to all one hundred are pages with a um, a signature artist because we're doing it with replacement as I said. All right. What is the probability distribution? Well, is that it's going to be binomial. binomial so x is going to and this is the the this is the uh, notation x b uh n p um n is whoopsies okay n is um 100 it is 100 uh samp trials 100 sample size and p the probability well since these are sampled randomly the probability is going to be 8 over 560, which is 1 over 70. So 1 over 70 is the probability of a success. 8 out of 560. It's better to do 8 out of 560. If you're not going to put it as a decimal, keep it as a meaningful fraction. 8, the 8 out of 560. Okay, great. Now they say what the probability? Let X be the number of pages that feature signature artists. Okay, great. So there's that example. All right. <clears throat> In the main pick four game, you pay 50 cents to select a sequence of four digits, such as da da da. If you play this game once every day, find the probability of winning at least once in a year of 365 days. Okay, so the event is winning. The interval, well, okay, so really this is a, this is a binomial. This is naturally a binomial distribution all right because there are 365 trials uh, there are 365 trials and um, and the the probability of me winning any one of those trials is one out of 10,000 because there's it's a four digit number uh, so the probability of losing is 9,999 over 10,000 okay so there's that and I think that's all I need for the binomial right and then what I want to know is the prob find the probability of winning at least once at least once so remember at least once so that is going to be probability that x is uh, greater than or equal to one that's the same thing as one minus the probability of the complement <coughs> which is that x equals 0, right? None. 
No. Okay. So for this one, since n is greater than or equal to 100, and the mean, which is n times p, is 365 over 10,000, which is quite small, point zero three six five. Since that mean is less than 10, I'm going to use Poisson. I'm going to use Poisson to, to do my... Um, my um, my binomial for me here. So I'm going to go to Excel. My keyboard. All right. So I want uh, P of at least 1. And that is going to equal 1 minus p of 0, all right? And I shouldn't have done equals. So this is, well, let me go like this. Equals 1 minus p of 0. And that is going to equal, okay, 1 minus, now I need to do my Poisson probability. So P O I, okay, there it is, Poisson distribution. X is going to be zero. Mean is zero point three six five. As much accuracy as I can put in that. And then cumulative. <laughs> cumulative is going to be zero because I'm not interested. I'm just interested in the probability that it equals zero. All right, I'm going to go ahead and press enter now. All right. And there it is. 0 .35, 0 0.035. So 3.5% chance of me winning at least once. It's quite small. Let's see. Is that does that pass the sniff test? Does that seem right? Yeah, I think so. W yeah, one out of a thousand. Yeah. So that probability is three point, I, I forget, is three point uh, three five. Let's go to th three significant figures. Uh, three five eight. <clears throat> Three five eight percent. So that's the probability of uh, of winning. Now that was using Poisson. Um, let's do it again with binomial. All right. Uh, equals one minus binome distribution. Number of successes is zero. I want to. Winning at least one is the opposite of not winning at all, so I'm going to do not winning at all and subtract it from one. Number of trials is 365. Probability of success is one out of one, two, three, four zeros, 10,000. And cumulative, again, is going to be zero. And I press enter, and there it is. I get pretty much the same number, at, at least to the number of significant figures that I was interested in. That's the same number. Okay, so we have just used the Poisson distribution to approximate the binomial distribution. Okay, here's an example. Uh, World War II bombs. In analyzing hits by V-1 buzz bombs in World War II, South London was partitioned into 400, 576 regions, each with an area of a quarter, about a quarter of a kilometer. A... Total of 535 bombs hit the combined area of the 576 regions. See, so this here allows us to determine an average of bomb strikes per 
per region, we could average that. Okay, now here's the question. Find the probability that a randomly selected region had exactly two hits. So, find the probability. So what we're going to do is, um, well, let's look at this here. I want to know about how many times a bomb, find the probability that a randomly selected region, so within a region, what's the probability that it had two hits? And so this is a number of occurrences within an interval. This is a Poisson situ situation here. All right, and uh, the, the event is a number of bomb hits, number of bomb strikes, and the interval is a single area. Okay, um, so what we need is an average, average bomb hits per single area. <coughs> That's going to be 535, that was the total hits, out of 700, out of 576. So this is going to be my mu. And we want to find the probability that it was exactly 2. So that's going to be P of X is my Poisson random variable. X is distributed as a Poisson with um, mean 535 over 576. And so the probability, we want to find the probability that x equals 2. And so I'm going to go ahead and go to technology. Get my keyboard out. Go into Excel. Um, So I'm going to do, so P of 2 is uh, equal to equals Poisson distribution, X is 2, and mean is, what was it, 535 over 576, and uh, cumulative is going to be 0 because I'm looking for exactly 2 hits and so that's about that's 17 percent so 17.13 no 17 point uh zero four percent so that's one seven so the probability is one seven zero three nine uh i'm gonna go ahead and round it three significant digits so 17 Point zero percent is the probability. Um, yeah, so that's the probability. Okay, among the th 575 regions, find the expected number of regions with exactly two hits. So how many regions? Well, so the probability of x equaling 2 according to the frequency definition of probability, relative frequency definition of probability, is going to be, um, is going to be um, the number of regions with two hits divided by total. And so if I multiply both sides here by the total, so 576 times the probability of <coughs> the of two of uh of a region having two hits, 
that's going to give me an approximation or an expected value of the region, of the number of regions with two hits. Okay, so what is that? That's going to be, so my answer then is going to be 576 times 0 0.1309, uh, 0.17039, which equals... Um, 576 times, well, let me just go to Excel. Equals, let's see, I'm here. Equals. <coughs> 576 times that thing right there, uh, 98 is what we get. Let's see, what was that again? 98.90, 90, just 98, basically. So that's going to be 98. So that's approximately 98. Sites. Okay, how does the result from Part B compare to the actual result? There were, in fact... Um, 93 regions that had exactly two hits. So 98 versus 93 is pretty close. Okay, and that's it. Yeah, that's it. Everybody, good luck on you. Uh, good luck on the.